Hi, I'm Artist Wodehouse, and I'm going to describe this recent acquisition to my collection of reed organs and harmoniums, and the reason why I went to the trouble of getting this instrument. First of all, it took me a, a couple of years to find just such an instrument. I was looking for something that was small enough to fit in the back of my yard station wagon so I could drive it around and not require professional movers. But the problem is, with these smaller instruments, they usually don't have much tonal colors. They might have two sets of reeds, in other words, two colors. But this one has many. And apparently, this 1871 SD cottage organ was the flagship model of the SD company at that period because of its wonderful capacity for creating an expressive, colorful performance. Now, I am going to suggest that if you're interested to know more about this instrument, Casey Pratt, the restorer from West Virginia, who did a splendid job on bringing this instrument back, uh, has another video up on my YouTube channel, which will be referenced in the information section of this video. But I'm going to retread a few things that Casey talks about and uh, from my, my standpoint as a performer. First of all, this instrument has four stops on the left and four stops on the right. Now the reason it has this division is because there's what you call a split point on this instrument. Generally speaking, the stops up here control the treble from F all the way up to the C, and the ones on the left, E down. So if you want to have the instrument playing fully from this note to this note, you have to pull basically two stops. And these are the two basic stops, the melodia on the left and the diapason on the right and they correspond in pitch to what piano sound is. Now, SD added an additional stop on the left, the viola, and on the right, the flute, that plays an octave higher. Add these two together, you get a nice grand full sound. Now, this is a beautiful stop by SD. It's called the Vox Jubilant, and that is a set of reeds. You know, these are metal reeds, brass reeds inside that create the sound like an accordion. This Vox Jubilant has a set of reeds going from here to here that are detuned, slightly tuned differently than the reeds that control the diapason and the melodia. And what happens is you get sort of this undulating sound. sound you could use it to voice melodies it's almost human but if you want the real sense the human sound there's another stop here called the Vox Humana and hopefully you'll be able to see what happens when I pull that stop and I play it in addition to the basic stop, you'll see this little whirly gig inside going round and round that creates a Doppler effect. What that does is simulate human vibrato. When singers sing, they often don't sing with a straight tone, but rather the tone wavers. <laughs> It's 
It's a marvelous stop. Okay, then there's a final sounding stop called the sub bass here. Yeah. Okay, so this, it's just in one octave from C to C, is used to simulate the foot pedals of a real pipe organ. And what it does is it supports the sound, a grand sound, very powerfully, especially if you pull the flute, the diapason, the vox jubilant, and the melodia, and the viola, and the sub bass. additional stop here that will really amplify everything and that's called the harmonic the harmonic coupler and what that does is it takes one of these stops here the flute the diapason and it will play not only the flute and the diapason but an octave higher of those two stops so you're basically doubling the sound so how that's working on this instrument you can see the notes going down because they're being coupled with their respective stops that were pulled down here and I also had the Vox Jubilant on what happens with the Vox Jubilant if you do this all the stops are pulled not the Vox Humana that's for special vocal effects but if you have all these stops pulled the, the Vox Jubilant adds that sort of zingy little topper to everything so it's more brilliant that's what the Vox Humanity can do uh, the Vox Jubilant can do when you're playing very fully so what I will be doing uh, the other thing that this instrument does which has a swell shade that opens up uh, like a swell shade on a pipe organ so that this can make it louder and softer and of course, your foot pumping is what actually controls almost all of your dynamics. And the beauty of this restoration, thank you, Casey, it's really tight. So I can do all kinds of wonderful, expansive dynamics. This instrument is very American. It's great. It's rich. It move, you know, moves the air slowly and, and very organically. It's not pointed. It's not trumpet-like, the, like the European harmonium. So small scale dynamics are harder to get on this, but this ant sense of amplitude and space, this instrument has, has got it. Now the other thing that this instrument has, because of its size, it will do what you call speak quickly. It, this is actually a characteristic feature of American instruments. They don't speak as quickly as the European instruments uh, for a variety of reasons, but this one will speak more quickly. So I'm able to play somewhat faster, more intricate music on it, which is great. So there's a lot of things I could do with this smaller instrument that fits into my car. So I'm going to be loading a number of videos on this instrument that will show you the different capabilities and how I use them in characteristic repertoire for, the, for, the, uh, for this 1871 SD cottage organ.